Hey guys, it's Thursday, July 16th, 2020, and I am sporting my new birthday shirt that my wife got me today, the Teflon Don, and um, it's awesome, and you can go to the Officer Tatum store and get yours, and go to YouTube and watch Officer Tatum, and some other good ones. So today I was thinking about somebody that... I used to hear a lot of Bible stories about when I was a kid. I've heard a lot of stories about them when I was an adult. And I probably could read the story every week and get something new out of it, or at least it could be a, um, uh, a little kick in the rear end if, uh, if I wanted to. It's a good story. It's one of my favorite stories. It's about Gideon. And I'm going to uh, tell a little bit about the story just so we can preface what I want to actually talk about. But if you remember Gideon... Uh, when he was, uh, uh, Israel was, the Israelites were struggling. They struggled a lot. Midianites were basically pounding on them for about seven years. And an angel of the Lord came up to, to Gideon and said, Hey, Gideon, we need you. We need you to rise up and defeat these Midianites. And Gideon was, of course, making excuses. You know, I can't, not me. I'm not, I'm not worthy enough. Um, you know, I come from uh, the least of my family. I don't know if he was the youngest or the poorest. I don't know, but whatever. He he just really thought he was too small to do anything. Much like some other Old Testament characters that we've, we've uh, heard from that have made excuses to not serve. But um, Gideon uh, said, hey, angel, prove it to me. First of all, this message is real. The angel gave him a sign. And, and, the, and Gideon was like, okay, I'm on board. So um, Gideon went to all the Israelites that were that were there and said, hey, I've been told we need to go rise up, take over. He said, first of all, there's like 32,000 of y'all. I want anybody that's afraid. The Lord told me that anybody that's afraid or has a fear of doing this, I'm going to go ahead and separate y'all on out. So 22,000 of them walked away and there was around 10,000 of them left. So God, so he went to God and said, God, okay, what you want to do next? How do you want to defeat them? He said, well, first of all, you still have too many. And Gideon was probably like, mm, only got 10,000. And they got like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. They got a lot. And we've been beaten up by them for years and years. And God's like, I don't care. He said, go take them all down to the river. And he said, I want you to let them drink out of the water. So the um, all 10,000 went to the water. Some of them bent down and lapped the water up with their uh, tongue. And some of them took their hand and lapped the water up on the knees. And he said, Gideon, I want you to keep the ones that got on their knees and took their hands and lapped the water up because they were the ones that had their eyes up and were ready. And so he sent away 9,700 more. So Gideon's left with 300. And I'm sure Gideon's sitting there thinking, God, this is not a good idea. But he said, God, what do you want us to do? And I'm sure he was thinking he was writing his own suicide note, but he still said, God, um, let's go. Let's do this. How am I going to beat these guys? And he said, I want you, God said, go get, uh, go get you some torches, some uh, clay pitchers, and some uh, trumpets for each one of your guys. So they went, all went and got one that night. They uh, divided up into three groups of 100. All the Midianites and all the people in the valley, tens of thousands of them sleeping, probably had some guards up, but they all surrounded this on the hills, three different hills. And... Um, Basically, uh, when one trumpet sounded, they all started sounding. And then they started breaking the clay pitchers, and then the, the torches were lit. The Midianites woke up. It was dark. You know, they didn't have the night lights like we have out here. They didn't have flashlights. You know, they didn't have time to light their torches. They just start thinking they're, they're in battle, and they start killing each other. And they start running off, and basically the Midianites were defeated. And it was all because of the 300 strong that um, God had sent with the torches the clay pots and the trumpets and that's what i want to focus on are those three items that god chose to use um you know the the uh trumpet itself you know a lot of times we hear about the trumpet like in end times you know the, people are when god blows the trumpet of the lord shall sound and times will be no more and we're raptured out well basically you know a trumpet in, in 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 that time frame was used to bring like an important news or 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 to, to a crowd or maybe even like if danger was on its way. So a trumpet was used to notify people. It was the, the sounding system. So usually it meant like one trumpet per company of people. 
in this case, they had 300 trumpets. So the Midianites thought it was like 300 companies of soldiers. So they kind of overwhelmed them. And then when they heard, you know, the clay pots being smashed um, and, and all, everything started lighting up and, and, and all around them, they, they said, we're surrounded, we're going to die, you know, and it's, uh, they just, all the Gideon's men just stood there in place. They held their position and they just watched the whole, the whole place just <laughs> defeat itself. And that's the, the, the trumpet, like we said, is bringing the good news. The good, and it's symbolic of bringing the good news of, of God, of Christ. The clay pitchers in this situation, it's kind of like taking maybe something that is a stumbling block to us, a stumbling block for us to uh, stand up for what we want to say about Christ, and basically taking that, whatever that is, that stumbling block, and just smashing it to pieces so that God's light can shine through us, God's torch. And um, even standing in when they stood in place and they didn't, um, they, they were being, um, when they held their position, you know, um, they, that, that was even a very important component of this because compared to what's going on today. And I know a lot of us have a lot of anxieties and fears about what's going on. You know, churches, a lot of folks are walking, uh, stepping away from church or making their home church or, or even stepping away from God and, and not, not trusting him wholly. Um, it's a hard time maybe to witness to some folks because, um, you know, everybody's kind of on wits in about things. And we still should be blowing our trumpets loud right now. A lot of us tend to back away and say, hey, you know what? We'll give these people their space. We'll give, you know, this, this church that, you know, uh, you know or this, or this group of people or, or these people that may be falling away. Um, you know, it's, we're going to back away because of the pandemic. I'm going to back away because of the race relations. No, we, we need to get over that fear of whatever it is, smash the pot, let God's light shine. I mean, what better time than now when people are in so much fear? Um, obviously, some people are, are going to fall far away and they're not going to listen, but there are a lot of people that really need God at this point in time. They need guidance in their life. They need something they can put their full trust into. And we have to be stronger as Christians about not concealing our light. If Gideon had army had not had not broken those pictures, the light would not have shown the trumpets would not have just the trumpets alone would not have done the job. Because they overcame that fear and blew that pot up and this and the light show shone throughout and they held their ground. They were proactive in, in what they were trying to do. And, and this allowed, um, them to be victorious. And that's what we need. I want to read something here though, that it's out of a commentary. I think it's Matthew Henry. This, this is really neat. The wicked are often led to avenge the cause of God upon each other under the power of their delusions and the fury of their passions. See also God. See also how God often makes the enemies of the church instruments to destroy one another. It is a pity that the church's friends should ever act like them. I thought that was pretty good uh, commentary there. Uh, uh, you may have to listen to it again. You can rewind it to about the eight-minute mark and listen to it again because I, I don't want to go over ten minutes. But um, I don't know. Just I worry about how delusional and the fury of some of the passion. Uh, is being exemplified to some folks I know that are <clears throat> that are supposedly Christians, and how they're they're falling, they're falling away. They're becoming sheep, and uh, it's discouraging. And you know, we, it's a pity that the church's friends should ever act like them. We shouldn't act like the world. We should be separate from the world. The Bible constantly talks about being separate, so we need to bring that light. And be strong. Hold our ground. Don't be afraid. All right, guys, take care. Have a good night, and we'll see you on Friday.